misconception I have in family law matters. You get some parties who just want to have a good fight. And I'm telling you this now. If you have a good fight and you spend £20,000 on the privilege of legal representation all the way to a final hearing, just in the finances, forget even dealing with the children, that's a whole separate set of costs. Just to hear a judge tell you what your lawyer or your mediator told you right at the outset of the case the outcome would be, you'll feel a lot more demoralised than you realise. There are no winners in family law matters. There really aren't. People don't understand. It's not the same as other traditional forms of litigation. There is no winner, there is no loser. In some ways, both parties lose because the relationship's broken down and there's all the emotional issues that flow from that. So anybody who thinks, oh, well, I'll avoid mediation or collaborative law or arbitration because I want a good almighty scrap and that judge will tell my ex what they are and this, that, it doesn't happen, you'll come away feeling demoralised and depressed and you very rarely get cost orders in family law matters. So what that means is at the end of your trial, when you try to say to the judge, oh, the other side should pay my costs, very rarely will you get them. Don't spend £20,000 on a lawyer to go all the way to a final hearing simply to get the outcome that you were told you were going to get in your first hearing. I feel sorry, your first meeting with your lawyer. <laughs> That's the truth. Traditionally, um, quite often it would lead the solicitors and the parties to having to go to court. Uh, and if you go to court, then there's a lot of time and effort involved. And that equates to a lot of legal bills. But also incredible stress, I mean, because you don't know what's going to happen next. Even even the solicitors and the professionals don't really know what's going to happen next. Children mediations are often the most difficult because they're so emotional, and uh, it's difficult for parents often to compromise about their children in the way that they they might more easily do when it comes to money. You can't cut children in half, for example, and so um, it really can be very difficult, very fraught, and very anxious. And something I've noticed is that couples come into mediation often quite angry with each other and very suspicious and resentful. Um, and it's a great sense of achievement when you've worked with a couple through mediation and you've been able to break down those barriers and help them to understand each other and, and understand each other's fears. I think the beauty of collaborative law is that it's a small step, isn't it? It's a small step <clears throat> where... Um, both parties are saying to one another, well, I'm prepared to trust you enough to go and sit down with you and to discuss these very important things with you. And from that basis, trust can grow. And I feel very much that this is very important, that the more you communicate, the more you give it a chance, the more c trust can grow from those small kernels. That's what I always say to clients who are very reluctant to, to be in the same room as their former partner or spouse. Um, that we can potentially try it by having shuttle mediation and it's often the way that um, once they've got used to the system or, or got used to what the, the expectations are they can then go into a room together. I have one particularly successful shuttle mediation where um, we had I think it was two sessions which were in separate rooms um, we started contact up and running and it started to progress and then gradually the mediation moved so that they were both in the same room but it just needed that sort of breaking in period where they just needed not to be in the same room. So even if somebody is very reluctant to be in the same room as their former partner or spouse, there are ways to overcome that and for mediation still to be used and still to be successful. If you come away from a poor relationship you, the best thing you should do is try to establish a working relationship at least for the purposes of your contact with your children because the children will benefit from observing you both as parents working together and from a ch child's perspective the last thing you want to see is the opposite of, of gripes and anger, doorstep arguments, uh, even telephone comments to the child as well as to the mother. The mother coming away from the telephone upset and angry, that doesn't help in an environment where you are wanting that child to see you with some respect and with love and affection and to understand that notwithstanding you're separated now, as parents, they both, you, you both as parents, love and support that child come what may.